seen from 200,000 okay, miles away. Okay, we have what you're seeing, Mike, is uh, Jim Lovell. Jim Lovell, uh, about to say something to uh, Captain Michael Collins. What you're Collins. seeing is the Western Hemisphere looking at the top is the North Pole. In the center, just lower to the center, is South America. what he sees and hopefully if you could maneuver uh, toward the terminator we're, that's a part of it we're missing we're getting the, the lighted portion there you go that's fine stop it right there very hard to hold okay, that space the, steady. the waters are all a sort of a royal blue the clouds of course are uh, bright white the reflection off the Earth is, uh, appears much greater than the moon. Uh, the land areas are generally a brownish, uh, sort of dark brownish uh, to light brown in, uh, texture. Many of the vortices of clouds can be seen of uh, various weather cells. And that long band of uh, appears serious uh, clouds that extend uh, from the entrance to the uh, of Mexico going straight out across the Atlantic. The Terminator, of course, cuts through the Atlantic Ocean right now, going from north to south. The southern hemisphere is almost completely clouded over, and uh, up near the North Pole, there's quite a few clouds. South, uh, southwestern Texas and southwestern United States is clear. I'd say there's some clouds up in the northwest and over uh, in the uh, northeast Portion. Roger, could you maneuver toward the Terminator again, please? This camera puts out just 20 watts of power. Stop her right there and hold it. The 
The Terminator, of course, is the separation between the daytime side and the sun and the nighttime side. Could you maneuver slightly more toward the Terminator? And as we look at this picture, it's uh, it's sideways the way we normally look at a globe. The North Pole That's is to the, the left. North Pole at the lower left portion of the Earth at about eight o'clock, as Paul Haney is just explaining. Also, how's that, Houston? Uh, we're getting about half the Earth, Frank. Uh, the top half of it, our top half, which includes the uh, the dark portion, is obscured. astronauts uh, worked all day today uh, the with definition on the, on the uh, picture. Filter, uh, filters and good. so on to make sure that they would get this picture. 200,000 miles away. Can you away. see uh, cloud patterns at all? Uh, that's affirmative. Good. About having a little trouble lining it up in the lens. Now we're seeing it. Uh, we're, we're missing the uh, the portion of the Earth that's over towards the uh, the Terminator. The dark portion of the Earth is uh, we're not picking up. We're getting about three quarters or four fifths of the rest. Of it. Uh, Roger, I'll move it and uh, tell me when I'm getting uh, better or worse, please. Good. Stop right there. Now that's, that's worse, uh, Bill. Go, go back where you were. You made it disappear to our 3 o'clock. Now it's coming back. Okay, stop right there. Now you're back where you were, and we need a motion about the 90 to that last one you gave us. Perhaps you get some idea now of how difficult it is to be a television camera. That's the wrong 90 degrees. 180 degrees away from that one. Stop right there. Trying to get that uh, earth in the center of our picture so that we'll have a good, clear look at it. Okay, now uh, we've lost a different half of it. I need a, a motion 90 degrees to that last one. Unlike the commercial television cameras, which show the cameramen exactly what they are showing back to the control, this camera viewing port for the uh, cameraman. So the cameraman just has to guess at which way he's pointing it. That, that's good right there, Bill. That's good right there. Bill Anders has the camera pointed out to uh, one of the spacecraft windows. Presumably the one directly in front of him. The window to his right has clouded up a little bit with some haze. Oh, well, Houston, the if you can uh, stick your polarizer in front of the camera without disturbing anything else, it might improve the quality slightly. The astronauts traveling 2,230 miles an hour toward the moon away from the Earth. relatively slow in terms of what we're used to okay, in space. Okay, the polarizing filter is in front. If you, if you lean to the left, turn your head to the left, that dark How mass that seems like? to come in at the top would appear to be north good. That there. didn't uh, make much of a change one way or the other, but in general, it's, uh, considering how far away you are, it's looking excellent. And under the clouds, just toward the extreme right of your picture, the outline of South America. But you must remember that the North Pole is down about the uh, 8 o'clock position on the left-hand side of the, of the Earth. Well, I hope that everyone enjoyed the picture that we're taking of themselves. Frank Borman, the commander of the Apollo 8. About 180,000. That 180,000 is nautical miles translated into space. Looking at yourself, the same from 180,000 miles out in space. I would say that they are centered, of course, as you do. If I'm a lonely traveler from another planet, what I think about the Earth from this altitude, whether I think it'd be inhabited or not. Don't see anybody waiting. Is that what you're saying? Jim Lovell.
above 11. Well, I'm just kind of curious uh, whether I would land on the blue or the brown part of the Earth. Better hope we land in the blue part. So are we, babe. Jim's always for land landing, sir. Imagine what they... Our uh, Earth picture is drifting off center again. Uh, if you could make another correction to bring it back, I couldn't tell you which direction, but that, you're going the right way. You're going the right way. A little bit more. A little bit more. Ah, uh, whoa, stop right there. Imagine what the color motion pictures are going to look like that they'll be bringing back. That's, that's uh, the best centering we've had, uh, Apollo 8. If you can just hold that, that's perfect.